most of you aren't subscribed. Make sure to exorcise the subscribe button, as it helps out the channel. Without further ado, having achieved an amazing feat, even some skilled adventurers would struggle to do, all whilst Gly glared in jealousy at his brother. Wondering how Seika knew newts were weak to fire, Seika reveals to his father that he had read it in a book. Wanting to give Seika a reward, Seika reveals that he has reached the peak of his learning at home, and would like to excel further by enrolling at the Lodonia Magic Academy. Pondering for a bit, his father accepts, but he states that Seika must pass the entrance exam by himself, with no influence from his family. Agreeing, Seika asks for Yifa to accompany him, but his father denies, as Yifa supposedly has no magic capabilities. Wanting to show off Yifa's hard work, Seika hands Yifa a wand, asking for her to chant a fire. Imagining a future with Seika, Yifa nonchalantly ignites the room, casting a mid-level spell, shocking all the onlookers. Satisfied, father agrees to enroll Yifa, but Gly is clearly against any of this. Stating that a family has never sent two children to the same occupation before, Gly argues that Seika is bound to fail, but his father drops the bomb, by revealing that Gly will be joining the army. Therefore his physical talent would be best suited for the army. Refusing to accept this, Gly challenges Seika to a duel, with the winner attending the magic school. With their mother against the duel, Seika ultimately accepts, with the duel set for tomorrow. Having returned to his room, Seika continues to prepare talismans, all whilst Yuki asks if he would kill Gly. Answering no, the two are interrupted by Luft, who wishes to speak with Seika. Apologizing, Luft hands Seika a late birthday gift, a glass pen. Knowing that Seika will win tomorrow, Luft asks that he take it easy on Gly, and that Luft is proud to be Seika's older brother. Admiring the pen with Yuki, Seika realizes something is approaching, asking for Yuki to hide. Seeing Gly outside, Seika realizes Gly is too impatient to wait for tomorrow. Demanding to know when Seika had shown interest in going to school, Gly states that they should duel until one person is unable to fight, immediately casting a mid-level spell, as Seika warns Gly about the dangers or powerful magic. As the smoke clears up, Gly is shocked to see Seika. Seen enough, Seika pulls out a talisman, chanting a curse, and paralyzing Gly in place. Tugging at the human-shaped talisman, Seika is able to replicate the action on Gly, whose arm is almost ripped off. Seeing Gly defeated, Seika relinquishes the curse, putting Gly to sleep. Six months ago, Seika is seen communicating with Bonds, one of his summons, asking for him to search around the forest for an elder newt. Having concealed Bonzi's presence, Seika was able to put on a scene to show to his father, and luckily it has all been going according to plan. As Yuki wonders why Seika is holding back so much, Seika reveals that he had learned his lesson from his previous life, vowing to live among the weak and help them. With departure day arriving, Luft comes to wish Seika off, noticing Yifa still exhausted from studying all night. To ease their worries, Luft mentions that the ride to the school takes several days, therefore they have extra time to study. Just like that, they have gifting Yifa a necklace, Seika sets Yifa's next goal to be able to consistently control spirits, and that he benefits personally, every time Yifa grows. Not used to horse-drawn carriages, Seika gets sick, but when Yifa reveals the lustrous town, Seika forgets about the pain. Following Seika's father, it's revealed that Seika was actually the child of Gilbert, the younger brother of Gly and Luft's father. Apparently, Gilbert had become an adventurer after leaving school, but had gone missing in the demon territory leaving Seika behind. Believing Seika to be half-demon, Gly's father had tested Seika for magical traits but none. Father had known that Seika was special, using unique techniques to mimic magic, hence this was one of the reasons why father had prepared Seika at school rather than in the army, in fear of what Seika would become. Back with Seika, we see Yifa and him arrive at their inn, as Yifa teases Seika for being unable to handle carriages. Now officially Seika's servant, Yifa wonders if she should spend the night with Seika, but Seika mistakes her flirting for her being hungry, prompting Yifa to leave. Now alone, Yuki appears, angry at Yifa for trying to flirt with her master. When Seika refuses to believe such a thing, Yuki states that Yifa is clearly in love with Seika, but Seika once again brushes it off. With the two arriving at the academy, Seika notes the interesting type of auras around him. 
An instructor begins to call students over to measure their magic affinities. Seika and Yifa are chosen first. Revealing his family name, other students make note of Seika, hoping to befriend him. But when it's time for Yifa to introduce herself, she reveals herself as Seika's slave. Bringing out an orb, the instructor asks to check the two's magical affinities, which Seika notes that in this world, fire, water, earth and wind are the basic types. As Yifa goes first, it's revealed that she has weak fire and wind affinities, but when it's Seika's turn, it seems he doesn't have any magic affinity, as expected. Seeing Seika with no magic, other students begin to hate Seika, believing Seika will use his noble ties to cheat his way into the school. Suddenly Amyu, a red-haired commoner shuts everyone up, cutting to the front of the line. As she places her hand on the orb, she's revealed to have all four basic affinities, leaving everyone stunned. As Amyu turns to leave, Seika thanks her for standing up for him, but she states that although she stood up for him, she still despises Seika, also believing that Seika will use his noble ties to enroll. As Amyu leaves, Seika realizes that Amyu resembles the girl that was sent to betray him in his past life. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like,